Hello and welcome back to an interactive tour of a, one of our 3D models. This one is the Centennial Bowl in Las Vegas and it was built using Unity 3D in 2018 and 2019. From a project standpoint, this is a system to system interchange, although it has some local access, which made it very unique from a design challenge and interesting, I think, aesthetically as well. I was able to work on this project nearly 10 years ago when I was with the department, and then we were able to do this as an interactive project in, um, in 2018 and 2019, and so it was a privilege to be part of this project on multiple fronts. And one thing that really made this project stand apart was the landscaping aesthetics. As you can see, it's very visually stunning. And so aside from that, we also did some innovations on this project. I'll talk through some of those. One of them was this orbit camera, which we can now set up pretty easily in Unity, although we're doing a lot of Unreal projects now. So this is our main orbit. You can see over here, this is our UI panel. Got some simple animations. And then we have some localized orbits like Sky Point right here. Uh, and then over here, Osa Blanca. You can also make those more kind of a uh, ellipse to, for longer projects because not everything, you know, is a system to system interchange. So that was pretty neat. Also, the phasing was just so big on this project. We, we didn't really have an existing phase. We had more of this 3A, which was, it had already been under construction, which was nice and then 3C, and then 3D. Let's go back to the orbit and show those. You know, there, this is quite the change when you walk through this. So we'd done some phasing before this, but one thing that was really neat was we started adding some colorized highlighting. So this flashing red here, uh, we can turn on the flashing, the flashing orange, flashing red, and go through and you can do all of them. And so this is really nice to highlight different areas, either in a public meeting, at a, a project meeting, or even when you're making renders, we can render everything out from this panel, export whatever resolution we want, and then you don't have to do anything in After Effects where you would track it and try and do any sort of overlays, which was really nice. We also have the same thing over here. And then we also added this, this wireframe thing. These are just shaders. They didn't take a lot of effort once we really figured them out, but they made for some cool aesthetics and renderings uh, later with, with our clients and the public outreach. Over here, we have all of our different movements. Uh, you can speed those up. You can also go here in the settings and you can turn them down, uh, lower them. So that's really nice. And all of this is uh, obviously independent of our phasing. And so you can switch that in real time, which is really nice. And then we made this pathway system and we later improved it quite a bit, but this was our first iteration. So the movement I showed you, you can tap this eye icon right here and it will go up and show you that movement. Again, this is nice for public meetings, project meetings, and also for renders. These, these, uh, the line work will show up in all of those. And this was kind of built because a lot of people wanted to know how do you get from Target up in the top to Walmart. And so we built that right in and it even changes by phase. So in the existing condition, you, you tap that and it shows how far that is. And then you, you tap it and it shows that it's better. And so that made all of our Walmart and Target goers much happier to be able to, uh, to see that. And then you can also tap the camera and actually fly through that movement and render it out or show it. We did have one public meeting uh, for this project. We brought two big touchscreens, 55 inch 4K touchscreens, and they were, they were uh, completely surrounded by people the whole time. And they were very, it was very effective. One thing that you'll notice as well, hopefully is some pedestrians. So there was a pedestrian path, which was a major part of this project. They, they really wanted to show how this project catered to the shared use aspect, both the uh, pedestrians, joggers, walkers, cyclists, uh, moms with strollers, anything like that. And again, remember that this is all independent of our phasing system. You can see how that kind of grows. You can even do some cool stuff like, you know, show the, the wireframe, which was actually kind of nice. So if I go back to my pathway system, you have this multi-use trail. We can show how that trail works. 
and you can actually uh, tap the camera and start flying over it. You see we had pedestrians and cyclists in here. We modeled ourselves. This is Wayne. You see him kind of kind of uh, duplicated right there. And we also added some just random 3D models. We had maybe 15 people and there were some joggers, there were some walkers and cyclists. And this was our best implementation of pedestrians today. We'd done it a little bit in Tahoe, but this one, we, we really kind of got down the technology. And one thing that's really cool about it, if you'll, if I can zoom in over here, that's my guy right there. That guy, he's just always trucking. He never tires. All right, so we go here and we go to our settings and sometimes you want to show just a few pedestrians and sometimes you want to show a lot and you can just on the fly do that and that was really nice from a visual standpoint depending on what you were trying to render or show to the public but then also from a performance standpoint sometimes you don't have as good of a machine over here you can see our frames per second we're running 16 to 18. this is a gtx 1080 ti most people probably don't have that and so you can turn down down the pedestrians if you want to improve your optimization. We did that as well with uh, buildings. You can see them pop up over there in the distance. That way you can turn them off if, if you need to or turn them on if you're rendering and then also post-processing. Add some amb ambient, ambient occlusion, excuse me. So if I go back to our, let's go back to SkyPoint. So you can see kind of what that post-processing does on the fly right there. So another thing that we did, we sh I showed you you could do the different movements. And if you go here to settings and you enable driver experience, then wow, it just dropped right behind that car. Civil effects license plate. So it's basically just a camera with a PNG image on top of it. And we've done this in other projects as well. Let me zoom past these guys. And this is nice to render out or just show in a public meeting or anything like that. One thing on that After Effects that I just remembered, uh, the post-processing is just the motion blur, which is uh, really neat, especially when you're doing image renders. So this way you can get a driver's view of any of the mu movements in real time. And we even got a, re a rear view mirror over there, which is kind of cool. And then the, one of the best parts of this project was our smart traffic. We finally started to have cars stop at intersections, signalize intersections, kind of merge and avoid each other. This was an early addition. This is, you know, over a year ago since we've done it, we've, we've improved our traffic system. But if you watch this long enough, you'll see that these cars right here on this bridge, they're going to wait and then eventually they'll go through and make that left turn and continue onto the freeway. And so this was the first time we didn't just have free flowing traffic or even keyframe traffic. And this, this completely changed our traffic from right here. We also added this camera adding feature. So let's say that we want to add a camera. We give it a name. And now that camera is saved. It goes right back to it. So if you're working with a landscape architect, for example, and you want to look at this, uh, they had a prehistoric theme. And if you want to look at it, you just, if you want to save that view, you just tap it here, name it whatever you want. Not sure why that keyboard pops up. And then, so I go over here and then I'll go back and it takes me right back to that thing. And we could even send this, build this application to our clients. They could create the cameras and then it would create a little file that they could send to us. And then we could integrate those views in all of our future builds, which was really nice. So let's go back over here. There's just a lot of really cool views of this project. And we also did a skybox. You can see the Las Vegas skyline in the distance which was the first time we'd done that. And it's not perfect, but it really helps, not just aesthetically, but also for performance because you're not rendering all that terrain and mountains out in the distance. And it didn't match up exactly, but it's still pretty neat. And then we had a few cinematic cameras. 
which are nice for renders or uh, public meetings or whatever you're doing. So overall, Centennial Lowell was a super fun project to work on. Lots of innovation that we brought for the first time. All these things that I've been talking about, we, we rolled them into future projects. Right now we're building our own software called CivilFX Vision. You can learn about that at civilfx.com slash vision2020. And hopefully we'll have a lot of these features available to more end users in a uh, civil visualization engine. So anyway, this is Sam with CivilFX on the Centennial Bull Interactive Project Tour.